Hello, welcome to this video. Let's get a simple and general overview on the newest DaVinci Resolve 15 by Blackmagic Design. Please leave us suggestions and comments to help us improve our next videos dedicated to DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is a professional video editing software with advanced media editing, color adjustments, and outstanding visual and audio effects. This comes with two versions, a freeware called Lite and the Studio One, which collects more advanced effects. In this video, you will get a simple overview on all you need to start as a beginner. When opening Resolve, the Project Manager page shows up, used to start a new or existing project. As you make and save projects, these are stored inside the default local database, as you can see from the Databases panel on the left. These databases can be linked to servers online or to computer folders. To define a new database, just click on New Database, providing name and location. You can open a project by double-clicking on it. To come back to the Project Manager, just use the Home button in the bottom right corner. To start with a new project, you can use the New Project button or double-click on Untitled Project. When opening a project, the main workspace opens, divided in six different workspaces you can choose at the bottom. Media is used to browse, import, and then manage all the files inside the project. Edit is where you modify and edit the appearance of any media. Fusion is a new workspace dedicated to visual effects and animations. Color and Fairlight collect several color and audio adjustments, respectively. And Deliver is where you can render and export your final video. In this video, we will take a look at the Media, the Edit, and the Deliver workspaces. When a new project is made, the first thing to do is to add all media needed, such as videos, pictures, and audio files. On the Media workspace, you can import files by dragging and dropping them from the Media Storage panel into the Master Collection at the bottom. In Edit Workspace, these files are collected inside the Media Pool panel. You can check them by double-clicking on them and using the Preview. At this point, you can start editing files by dropping these into the timeline from either the Media Pool panel or from any computer window directly. These files are shown as colored rectangles called clips with their names on them. Video frames and pictures are in blue and collected within video tracks with a V letter and a number on the left. Music and speech are in green color and are contained inside audio tracks at the bottom, well separated from the video tracks. You can check the timeline content carefully by using your mouse wheel and holding down the shift key to move in time and the Alt key to zoom in and out around the red marker. Remember to save your project with Command and S or Control and S on Windows. The first time you save, you are asked to fix a name for it. Your project is stored as a .db file inside your database. And make sure to save it often, especially when you see a red edited word on top. You can get a quick preview on each clip according to what you set under Timeline View Options. You can expand the clips to get visual frame thumbnails in time or show sound waves on all the audio files. Whereas to get a complete playback on the project, you have to use the main preview in the top right corner. This shows your project content where the red marker is placed. You can click and drag on the timeline to place and move the red marker in order to check your project frame after frame in time. To play back in real time, use the player below the preview. Now let's see how to edit your clips with the selection mode enabled. You can move clips by clicking and dragging these in time or in other tracks. New tracks are added in case they are needed. Videos with audio get frames and audio pieces linked, showing a chain icon on these. These are always moved together, but you can make these independent by right-clicking on them and going to Link Clips. You can stretch and shorten clips in time by clicking and dragging their edges. 
just pay attention with videos and audio files, since these get part of their content cut if shortened. To stretch and shorten a clip without affecting its content, you can change its speed or playback rate by right-clicking on it and going to Change Clip Speed. If you set a percentage below 100%, the clip is played slower, and so it can last longer in time. If the percentage is above 100%, the clip is played faster, and so it is shorter in time. You can also play back the clip in the opposite way by enabling reverse speed. To delete a clip, select it and use the backspace key. In case you make any mistake, you can undo the latest actions by Command and Z or Control and Z for Windows. To make quick copies of a clip, just click and drag it while holding down the Alt key. Make sure not to overlap the two clips or one of them gets cut. To split a clip into pieces, enable the Razor Edit Mode and click and clip where you want to split it. You can manage the content of each track by using the buttons on the extreme left. You can use the Lock button to prevent any track from any modification on any of its clips. On video tracks, use the Frame button to hide or show its content. On audio tracks, use the Mute M button to mute all its clips or the Solo S button to mute all the other audio tracks except the interested one. To delete a track and all of its content, just right-click on it and go to Delete Track. Video tracks also set an order of visibility between the clips that overlap in time. All the clips inside the top video tracks are shown in front of all the clips contained inside video tracks lower in position. The main video preview is also used to edit the basic appearance of the visual clips selected from the timeline, according to the mode chosen in the bottom left corner. Use Transform to move the clip by clicking and dragging it. Scale it by using the white nodes and rotate it by using the external node on top. With Crop, you can use the nodes to crop the clip in order to remove all the parts you don't want on the project. Moreover, use Dynamic Zoom to apply animated pan and zoom and annotations to add colored arrows and lines on the clip. You can edit all your media clip properties with the Inspector panel in the top right corner. Depending on the clip selected, this panel shows video or audio properties. You can edit by sliding on the bars or typing the property value directly. If you don't see any option, make sure to double-click on the property name. You can also extend the whole panel by using the down arrow button on top. When selecting visual clips, you can use the opacity to set the transparency level and composite mode to adjust the transparency according to the clip colors. Inside Transform, use Zoom to scale, Position to move, and Rotation Angle to rotate the clip around the anchor point. Moreover, use Pitch and Yaw to 3D rotate, and then Flip buttons to flip the clip horizontally or vertically. Inside Cropping, set how to crop the clip applying any feather with softness. When selecting audio clips, you can adjust the volume with clip volume, the tone with clip pitch, and apply any audio filter under clip equalizer. When selecting videos with audio, you can edit both the visual and the audio properties, depending on the selection chosen on top. After editing the clip with the inspector or the preview, a waveform icon appears on it. Used to open and close an envelope graph. This is used to edit the clip properties in time by using markers called keyframes. Keyframes save a property value in the instant of time they are placed. In this way, if you get two or more keyframes in time with different values saved, you can create an envelope curve where the clip property changes in time according to it.
you can open the envelope graph on each property from the list in the top left corner. By default, all of these have a flat envelope line. To add keyframes on it, place the red marker on the right instant of time and click on the rhombus button in the top right corner from the graph or from the inspector panel next to the property name. Once you have two or more keyframes, you can shape the envelope curve by moving each keyframe horizontally through time and vertically to fix the property value. Click on a keyframe to select it. You can edit the envelope curve on it with the buttons on top and remove the keyframe by right clicking on it and then going to Cut. Whereas to remove all the keyframes and reset the property value, use the Revert button on the right. You can add transitions, titles, and effects on your project by using the Effects Library panel. Under Video and Audio Transitions, you can browse for amazing transitions to drag and drop on the extreme edges of the clips. Visual Transitions apply effects to make the clip appear and disappear, whereas Audio Transitions increase or decrease the clip volume. You can also add visual transitions between two clips by adding the transition on the first clip with the second clip following. You can manage any transition just like the clips. Click and drag its edges to change its duration and use the inspector panel to change its properties. You can also add keyframes and use the envelope graph to change the transition in time. If you don't see any waveform button, make sure to zoom in enough. To change the effect of the transition, just drop another on it. To remove the transition, just right click on it and go to Delete. You can also apply simple linear transitions directly on the clips by clicking and dragging the white markers on the corners. Inside the OpenFX and the AudioFX sections, you can find several video and audio effects you can browse and drop on the clips. Clips with effects show an FX icon in a corner and a new section called OpenFX on the inspector panel where you can adjust and find the effect properties. You can also use the preview in OpenFX Overlay to edit the effect without using the inspector panel. Whereas all the audio effects are inside audio, below all the audio clip properties. Next to the effect name, use the bin button to delete the effect, the revert button to reset its properties, and the orange button on the left to turn the effect on or off. New in DaVinci Resolve 15 is the Fusion Workspace, used to apply advanced visual effects on each clip before it is used on the edit timeline. The appearance of each clip is the result of the path from media in to media out across several effects or tools. You can choose from the effects library panel. We won't see this workspace in this beginner tutorial. In the edit workspace, you can use the title section under the effects library to import ready text templates by clicking and dragging these on the timeline. You can add standard static titles and also the new fusion titles which include animations. The text imported creates a new title clip inside a video track and in gray color which can be managed just like other clips. You can use the inspector panel to edit its basic visual appearance under video and everything regarding text font, style, and color under text or static tiles or Fusion for the animated ones. The way to change, revert, or keyframe the text properties is the same as seen for other clips. Let's see how to export your project with the Deliver workspace. On the timeline below, choose the part of the project to render by adjusting the highlighted region. On the Render Settings panel, set the video format and resolution to use. Choose Custom to apply the video settings as you prefer. YouTube or Vimeo to use a ready suitable template to upload to these sites. Also, in 2160p or 4K, Final Cut, Premiere, or Pro Tools 
to export to these products, or audio only, to export just the audio part. Then, set the video name under File Name, where to save it, under Location, and find Video Settings, Audio Codecs, and Metadata through the options below. Once done, click on Add to Render Queue to list a new rendering job under the Render Queue panel on the right. Saving Settings, File Name, and what to render from the project. To start rendering, select the job interested, and then go to Start Render. Thanks for watching this guide. Check out our channel for more amazing and free video tutorials.